ladies, welcome, Healthy Empowered Women. I'm um, just getting my screen set up to make sure I can see and hear everybody. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. Super excited for tonight's session. You have no idea. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to let you know I'm really, really excited that a lady called Jo has just signed up for Goddess Retreat. That's in six weeks. I can't wait. So I still have two spots left. If you've been thinking about getting some time out, doing a bit of transformation, a bit of personal development, while you're sitting in a five-star resort, then this is perfect for you. Um, and yeah, there's two spots left. If you want some details, comment below and I will share with you. Um, if you are watching and joining us live, pre please comment below um, and let us know that you're joining us. And uh, we, we love it when we've got an audience, people to talk to. So yes, please comment below. So tonight's topic, I had to um, double check what I had all tonight's topic because my guest speaker let me name it myself <laughs> which is always interesting and I guess because I'm over the age of 40 uh, I made it about over 40 year olds but this topic is about all women okay it doesn't matter what age you are uh, but it is something that I guess for me personally on my own fitness journey has been a little bit wobbly the last few years and I thought this is such a great topic that we can just d deep dive in with such an uh, amazing expert in this field and really get to um, stop all the worry and the fear that we have so movement and exercise that benefits 40 plus year olds but saying that any age and how we can prevent injuries. So tonight's guest speaker is Tani Russell and she is a personal trainer. Um, she's been in the industry for 13 years. I've actually known her for four and a half years. We were just working it out. Um, and uh, she is here to talk to us about movement and how we can get back into it, or if we're already into it, how we can do some things that are gonna help us prevent our injuries. Welcome Tani, thanks so much for joining me tonight and sharing your time and expertise. Absolutely. Nice to be here. Um, I've got to start with the same question I ask everybody. What's your favourite food? Honestly, it's passion fruit. Ah, there's so, many, there's so many in my fridge. My fridge might not look as good as yours, but there's so many in my fridge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love passion fruit as well. Do you know passion fruit has more vitamin C than oranges? No, I didn't. No, yeah. I do. <laughs> I, I didn't even know. My husband came home and told me. And I was when? Like, and I just like went and Googled it and I was like, damn, he was right. How did I not know that? Uh, we've got a few people on live tonight. So we've got Sue. Sue is joining us all the way from the UK. How awesome is that? That is amazing. Yeah. Hi, Sue. Hey, Sharon. Um, if you're joining us, please comment below um, and you're welcome to ask any questions. You can start popping them into the comments and I will read them out for Tani. So, Tani, I just wanted to. Um, I guess let everybody get to know you a little bit and uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood and how that included movement. Oh my God. So I was always the kid that won all the races. <laughs> um, I was just this little athletic kid that, yeah, my parents just put me into all of the competitions and I was representing Australia at one point for cross country and then they realised that you couldn't really make a tennis player into an athlete, but you could make an athlete into a tennis player at the age of 13. So I got stuck right into a massive tennis career for five years where half my schooling was done during the day and then half my tennis training was done in the afternoon. Um, so I did five years of that gnarly training and um, basically just spent my entire childhood either running or on a court and just fitness fanatic basically as my parents would call it yeah so that's pretty full on my son's really um, into exercise and I could I think I literally get him off doing stuff and sign him up for all sorts of sports just so that yeah because he can't sit still and yeah probably was the same <laughs> All like all the coach, all the coaches wanted me. All the teachers wanted me. They wanted me to do all of these things. I was the, I was a lightning bolt, as they called me. So I've kind of just grown up with this background, hence why I guess I am here where I am today. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, did being in tennis and getting into it from such a competitive 
I, I guess, um, area that you were in, does that mean that you had to be really, really disciplined? Super disciplined, sort of like your son. It reminds me a lot of him, Jaden. Um, he just reminds me so much of how my lifestyle used to be as a kid. Um, I would never touch anything bad. It, everything had to be healthy. I was never miss a training session. I'd be doing the beep test every day after school in the street, like <laughs> everything like that. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> I can kind of imagine it though. <laughs> I so, know. Yeah. Tell me how you got into um, the fitness industry and was it actually what you wanted to do? Or Yeah. Was- so I always had that massive passion. So it kind of just naturally happened. Um, everyone was just like your energy and the way that you are, you'll be pushed into it regardless. So yeah, I ended up back then you had to do a two year course. It was nothing like you could get your certificates in like four weeks. Now I had to do two, two full years and Um, That was like all human biology, nutrition based, everything. And that was back in 2000 and geez, um, 13. So years and years ago, I just started my, I tried to leave high school and start my, my TAFE after that. And then, yeah, that bridged me to this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, And so what, how did you sort of go into the industry? Did you start working for other people first? Because I mean, you've been your own boss for quite a few years with a very successful business, but how did you start into it? Yeah, Um, I literally just handed my resume in down at um, Craig Leisure Centre. Oh yeah, I loved Craig Leisure Centre. It was so good. Um, And I finished my work experience there. And then I got um, an offer from a guy called Anthony, just ran like a little gym, like a little studio in Kalaroo. And I just ran all of his classes and all of his clients for him. So mm. he was all about making money while you sleep. And I was like, I'm here for it. <laughs> I was only, you know, such a young age with no experience, but he trusted me. And honestly, that's the best thing he could have ever done was just let, like, let me in a space like that with complete charge and sink or swim I guess is where I learned he threw me in the deep end and I learned the confidence there and then because it's very hard walking into a job like that like some sometimes you, as a personal trainer you could have classes up to 20 people or more but you've got to have that like background to to teach you how to to get to where you are yeah and I think maybe because you've always been in the fitness industry for such a long time for yourself personally being coach that it was Um, not too much of a step to stand into that coach role it wasn't too much but at first it was I'll say that it's scary because you're in charge and um, you're in charge of a a lot of people's goals and you want to make sure that they come true but it's also about coming on to people in the right way reading people's energies reading the room finding out how they can achieve their goals correctly not just saying get down get me 50 push-ups like go 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 like you have to understand the person yeah I've definitely had that kind of trainer before Um, horrible I've had it too (laughs) um and uh, yeah it's very disempowering like you don't I don't know you kind of feel like you're not good enough I think for a woman um when you sort of spoken like that I don't know it's just it's it's definitely got a different kind of energy um so Working with women of all different ages, is that something that you've wanted to do or is it something that you just sort of came into? Because I know you have lots of different groups that you're working with currently, including me, um, at a different time slot and everything. So how does that work? Yeah, um, most importantly, I think the last three or four years, my mindset has changed as to what would happen um, when I get older because we are only getting older. But my mum actually had quite a severe injury and it really kind of transitioned my ways of wanting to help women later on as opposed to getting fit when they're young, going to Europe on a boat, because that was me as well. But Mm -hmm. I'm really realising that these women um, are... uh, injuring themselves quite more and more like just by doing nothing for example my mom so there's a lot to do with mobility um a lot to do with rehab a lot to do with just like consistency that I want to kind of re-transition my business to help that occurring yeah Yeah. it's funny you say that because I feel like 
we think we're invincible for so long. Like I thought I was, and then you know, yeah, like years, hundred percent, all these different things thrown at me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is so frustrating. And you mentally think you're younger than your body is, and so you're like trying to make your body do stuff that it doesn't do. One day it just won't. Yeah. One day it just won't, and. Yeah. We are getting stiffer. We are getting less mobile. Um, we have things on our phones that we click an app that makes us that way. People aren't moving, especially with COVID, anywhere near like they should have been or are doing. And since being in the industry the last couple of years, especially, I've seen nothing more than people in pain. And that's where I want to help. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's... Um... Yeah, I definitely have seen that myself with clients like the last few years that um, we've got a little bit more, even to the point of not leaving the house or feeling comfortable leaving the house. And so in that process, not moving and being outdoors as much. So, um, but even um, so much fear based around the last two years. So I think we kind of need to all build our confidence back to get back out there. Yeah, we got compliant. We we just we did we did nothing for a long time, and I know I can count on my hands how many people really really suffered in that time. And they're just people close to me, not let alone my clients. You know, mm. so I just guess what I want to come from this live tonight is um, I want to preach movement more than anything. Mm. Yes. Yes. So, um, ladies, if you've got any questions, please pop them in the comments and we will, um, I will uh, read them out for, um, okay, I have got some questions there, but I'm obviously missing them, sorry. Um, so, let's have a look. So, I am 62, can you help me? Thanks, Claire. Um, Claire's Absolutely. Asking, so, <laughs> I'll leave you to what would you like to say on that how how what's your question Claire I guess is it that you're wanting to get back into movement or is it that you're not sure because of your age because we have if 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 you live in Perth I'm assuming Claire lives in Perth not sure she I think so yes I'm pretty sure this isn't the one from the UK <laughs> no that's Sue but Sue's um, way back in November so I can help anyone at any age um I work with kids I work with um all ages really and it's never too late to start we can start with basic you know stretching band work body weight movements I don't I've had a million ladies with netball injuries in the knees and reconstructions of their hips like I've, I have dealt with that before it's only common um but there's what I'm trying to say is it's not too late to start it never is mm. yeah I think key, isn't it is that it's it's not too late to start we can start at any age and I think every time I've stopped and because of an injury and then I've sort of got myself back into it <laughs> I've stopped yeah. I've stopped it you know it, yeah it's um sometimes it's terrifying you let go of it and you just don't come back to it but it's it's never too late to restart you know mm -hmm. yeah I think sometimes we can get caught up in our, and I hope I don't offend anybody here because I've done it myself, but we get caught up in our own story and we have something that's happened to us, like an event or an injury, and then we kind of sit in it too long and think that that's a reason why we can't do things, maybe because we're in a bit of fear. And even if we're injured, there are still ways that we can move our body. There's still ways we can exercise and get ourselves back into. And um, that's exactly right, Mel, is that you should never stop moving regardless um, of, you know, what you've been through. There's still other ways. Um, injury pending, you don't know what you can possibly do, but there's still a way to get out and see sunshine every day. There's still a way to get fresh air. There's still a way to move your body in some way. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to just like sit there and, you know, be in that for that long. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's a, uh, a lot of women that um, uh, would benefit from it to support mental well-being. What's your thoughts on that? Sorry, sorry, I just missed that. The rain is pouring here. Oh, what did you say? It's not raining here. Um, it like the that movement and exercise really helps us our mental well-being and we don't take it. Oh my goodness. 
like there is such a thing called an endorphin release and if you don't have that natural serotonin running through your body and those endorphins you'll just sit in it and it will just sink you it really well like it's a natural release and I just I honestly can't stress that enough how important that is I'm sorry if that's brutal but there's a way and it's free to do it you know yes yes I know we forget that there's um, movement is actually one of the vital things that we need to do in life to actually move it's just as important as water and sleep Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I know I can get um, caught up sitting in my at my desk and, and just, um, yeah, working away because I love doing that. And then if it wasn't for the fact that I'm actually booked in with you, and I have to yeah. see you and train with you, I probably I make up excuses. And so I find that actually works really well for me. And I'm sure it would work for a lot the of the way work. I like to explain it is, you know, when you're being on a really long haul flight, and you just can't wait to get out the plane and move like it's the same as in real life what's your excuse you know yeah uh I don't know I think you just get lost in it and you're just (laughs) sitting there and the next thing you just yeah don't even realize how long you're Correct. Yeah. That's another thing as well. You, you don't realize, but um, making sure you have those little plans throughout the day or throughout the week. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to tick off little boxes as I go, like on my calendar, I have like a certain part designated for my training day and I tick the box and I move on and you celebrate the small wins by doing that. You're like, oh, I moved last week. I didn't move at all. This week I moved twice. Like I've got to move. How, how amazing does that feel? Yeah. Which it, that's the thing as well. We should be so grateful that we can do it. There's a lot of people that can't for, you know, unfortunate reasons. So, yeah, we, we don't use what we have the capacity of using. Um, so Claire's just saying she's actually in Queensland, um, but she would like to get active. Oh, Claire, I wish you were here. <laughs> and then you could, um, yeah, come and... and no, I, I love these questions. I wish to get active. Mm. My advice would just be put down on paper what did you do last week and what are you going to do this week Mm. um even if you have the smallest thing last week or the biggest thing this week like make it make sure it's uh measurable Mm. and that you can completely achieve that because if it's non-achievable you won't have any success so just something small that you can tick off each week and celebrate the wins and start with something like a Kmart band you know, like a booty band or a bicep curl band or something like that. There's no, no one has to say you have to go join a gym tomorrow, Mm. but get up uh, instead of doing just your block walk, why don't you find a hill? I know there's lots of hills in Queensland. Um, Something more, double up, just, just, but record it as well. Like make sure you're writing everything down and then you just build from that, you know, and then all of a sudden you've got all these ticks and you're like, wow, I've, I've done really well so I think that's a that's how I do it anyway it's a good way to start yeah I love that I love that and that's kind of like a little bit of um your own personal accountability too isn't it it's like a way of personal accountability no one has to see it's in your journal like I mean I can bring something up for you right now if you want yeah I think I I mean I went for a um celebrate themselves we need to celebrate ourselves you know the thing I just uh, yeah I celebrate it like I I'm accountable to myself I set myself a 14 day running challenge last week I have all 14 ticks there on my phone oh I love it that's every every single time I ran 3ks or whatever it was I ran I ticked the box and I went back and that their rewarding feeling after 14 days of all of those ticks was like what's the next goal you know yeah yeah so what do you do? What is that the sort of things that you would suggest people to do to stay motivated and inspired in their exercise is to have um, some goals that they can work towards? That personally is what works for me, but I ha- highly recommend that because I've worked with a lot of women that start really high and then they fall off and they start really high. That's why I run quite a lot of challenges or I try to run three or four challenges a year. Um, and I, oh my God, when I run a challenge, everyone's on. Yeah. And that's, if you think about it, that's the same perspective as my own personal challenge. Mm. If you let yourself down, you don't beat yourself up. Um, but you make up for it. So, for example, my challenge, I'd do double 
if I lost a day. So you double up. But even if you did lose two days or three days, you start again next week. It's not a big, it's not a big problem. But if you don't have a goal is what I'm trying to say, you won't have anything. So, and don't use it as your, your friend's wedding or, you know, oh, summer's coming up. Don't use that as something like that. Do it for something that's like solely for how you want to feel in your clothes and how you want to be in your mind. Yeah. Whether or not it's weight loss, whether or not it's strength, you know. Mm. Mm, I love that. That's so, so true as well. We do get caught up in wanting to do things for not necessarily all the right reasons. Um, but, sure. but at the end, yeah, exactly. But at the end of the day, we all have to move somehow. And if you're not moving, we need to be like meditating or doing something for our brains, something that's going to give us because we all have the 24 hours in the day. And I know that's so cliche to say, get up early or whatever you need to do, but go and get your nails done, having your hair done, getting a massage, all of that is the same thing as giving back to yourself in terms of what I've just spoken about. Yeah. Yeah, so true. We always seem to find time for that, don't we? <laughs> don't we? So do I. <laughs> So what are some, um, do you have a tip for any of the ladies on um, what they can do to, um, I guess, prevent injuries or what, what's um, some ideas that they can do to get back into exercise um, without? Absolutely. Like number one tip is like, don't be scared. <clears throat> you know, the human body is an amazing thing. Um, you'd be surprised what it can do. But if you don't move it, you know, it could only get worse. But there's so many simple things that we do um, with bands or just basic stretches. There's so many cool things on if you're Instagram or you're not YouTube, there's a lot of um, hip mobility, glute mobility. So what I was going to say is as a human body, we're very dominant in our front side, quad dominant, if, if you know what that means. But everything in the front is very dominant so the backs the hamstrings the glutes the lower back you wonder why you get lower back pain upper neck pain everything in the back is struggling because we don't train it enough mm. um so going back to the very basics of using yeah small dumbbells glute bands just um stretching at the very least just stretching pilates yoga just to get everything really stretched out to be able to move properly to re-engage and then engaging is the biggest word I would like to use as well because we are so underactive in so many parts and and this is where we feel terrible in life like you know my mom picked up a shopping bag one day and that was it for her you know so longevity in that sense is where you know practice won't let you down yeah yeah and I think um in the fear of um being injured we can actually end up injured and uh, some of those injuries can be that they we have them for a long time or the rest of our lives and that's pretty scary what especially like what oh you- my goodness I have so many sorry to, yeah so many women that come and just say I'm worried about my back but that's because you're worrying about your back how mm-hmm. about you just Work you know, with- this is the other thing that really people get stuck on is the more you move, the better you'll be. The more you do these movements, the less it's going to hurt, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. I love how um, when we're training with you, um, you set it up each um, session so that it's personalised for us. So there's a few of us, so we've got that atmosphere and we can um, try and get away with a little bit of chatting and, you know, it's quite fun. And I think that's the reason why I've stayed with you over the years is because you are quite entertaining. <laughs> um, said but, that, yeah. <laughs> but it's also, I think, because, you know, want to feel for me, like being injured and coming back from injury, wanting to feel safe and secure with somebody, but also knowing that I, you know, if I don't know what my limitations are, that you know what they are so that, you know, I don't get myself into a situation that's scary. Yeah. And I guess that was what I said at the start. I'm, I'm able to kind of read. You and I spoke about that earlier. I'm able to read the situation and I'm never going to, chuck someone in that position so whether I have to pull someone away and really stretch them do a bit of mobility work 
your body will not be able to be like put into a boot camp where there's like 20 barbells, 20 people, or even 10, whatever it is, um, with a with a bar and you're trying to squat weights. If your ankles are tight, if your back's tight, if your hips are buggered, if your lower back's hurting, like you physically will fold over and not be able to do those movements. So I guess I'm proud of myself in that respect that I've learned how to pull people aside, readjust them, literally, physically, and um, get them moving again. And you, Mel, know exactly how much better you feel after I hurt you. But um, yes. I guess, yeah, that's part of part well, of it. I recognize when I'm sore, like before I even recognize I'm sore. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, I almost should start so. running a mobility training business <laughs> at this point. Yeah, but I think that's key though, isn't it, is to have all the different, you know, and, and working with so many different trainers over the years, um, finding you that can do from so many different angles and to be able to address so many different concerns and sort of see things that we can't see in ourselves and where we're needing. Yeah, to. and look, ladies, if you're listening and you are exercising um, and going to, for example, F45 or any kind of group fitness class, unless you have that, it's called dynamic work unless you had that dynamic mobility programming before and after and that sounds like really heavy but it's not it could be like up to two three four minutes either side of each session to properly move your body to allow it to work consistently through the session you're wasting your money (laughs) it's as simple as that is that because you're injured or is it just because you're no like imagine doing a squat where nothing's working you just think you're doing a squat but you're not like Mm. there's so much to it I think people can come to classes and they can might be able to do like some dumbbell press or whatever but like their their neck hurts because they work a computer job there's so much to exercising with weight training Mm. that can be done separately but also really easily really easily just the basic knowledge mm, yeah. yeah you do say like, a lot of- I'm sorry to cut in melt like you know when you come to my sessions you we're always moving before we start you know stuff like that that's definitely definitely that's for sure um all right well I does anyone have any questions please pop them in the comments and I'll read them out to Tani um is there any uh, anything else you wanted to um share with the ladies any um any other tips or information that you can think of um yeah if you're struggling to move um like I said just start really small um write it all down um get everything going on, on a piece of paper. I'm sure Mel preaches that to you anyway with everything else that she does. But um, even if it is a local yoga class or, you know, an extra walk with the dog or some homework, you know, um, I can definitely help you with that. Um, really just getting those muscles activated that I find a lot of women don't have especially post baby especially post 30 (laughs) everything starts to hurt so there are ways to work around that yeah um so we're about to you located tani and um how how does your sessions work i'm north of the river um i'm in pabri so i'm not far from mel i know Um, you have women that drive from the south all the way to you because I have two people that come from Belmont. <laughs> I have one lady that comes from Cottesloe. So, yes, um, but it's, yeah, I'm basically not far from you, Mel, um, not far from Mullaloo Beach. Sometimes I take outdoor sessions in the summer. Yeah, I have are. a beautiful gym home set up. And, um, yeah, I'm actually offering anyone on this live a bit of a free trial as well. So, how exciting so a free trial so how do they go about that just contacting you on facebook absolutely otherwise i can skip my mobile number out here (laughs) okay i think we'll just put your details below it's up yeah put my details below yeah put your details below in the comments and um yeah definitely people can reach out to you what Um, i'll be doing is it kind of just yeah organizing 
like a group of women if you want to kind of all join up together because you're all from the same place um otherwise if you want like a bit of a free consult or a free one-on-one I'm happy to do that too yeah we've got a comment here you're so good at that you recognize when I'm struggling before I do yes Louise (laughs) me too (laughs) happened this morning I jumped on the treadmill and she was like uh get off (laughs) and come over here and do some stretching I know Lucky I spent so many years in Thailand knowing how to get the muscles. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Louise. Um, Denise said, went to the gym, the Zavo, haven't been in ages, I need to do more. Yeah, Denise, I tell you, you should have a look at something like this. You'll love it. And it's local as well. I think you're north of the river. Um, it's way better than a gym. In my opinion, it is so awesome. Uh, and even and even sorry and even if you like are a gym person or you're doing your own thing like I'm still happy to help you out on the side you know that well, I actually went to the gym the other day with my client and like tutorialed her through the gym on the days that she's not with me so <laughs> wow that's awesome you're yeah. like that I think that's the difference with working with you is that you go above and beyond and you do so much more than other anybody else I've and I've had a lot of trainers over the years <laughs> that's a whole nother subject glad um, I'm not getting rid of you anytime soon <laughs> well you never know but I think um I think I I definitely know that the reason I show up every week is because I find it entertaining and fun um I find the sessions go fast I hate going into a trainer and you're like constantly looking at the time you're like I need to get out of here and I love the conversations that we have and the setup is really good and it's always different so I don't get bored and I I I do get bored with stuff pretty easily so I love that you don't make our sessions boring and for me I think um it's you are always getting us to focus back on ourselves getting us to work and work towards being better than the last session we were in rather than worrying about what everybody else is doing and I think that's what's really important and a lot more empowering thank you yeah uh you've got a few people here that have um asked for your details so what we'll do is um I don't know if you want to put your mobile number or we can just put your Facebook profile. Yeah, I normally just work um, better by SMS yep. at the moment. Um, well, my one. face, yeah, I think that is best. So I'll just put my mobile number if you're not on Instagram. Um, otherwise, my Facebook if that's best. But, yeah. Um, hang on, we got another comment. Janine, Tani is amazing and so supportive. I haven't exercised in years and I feel so much stronger after just a few weeks and no judgment because I'm forgetful and uncoordinated. Thanks. Oh, DJ, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the same. Like, Thank you. <laughs> no judgment and we are forgetful and we are uncoordinated. <laughs> oh we won't go there right now but I'm up for anything I basically call myself a broken record at some times I'm just like okay keep going (laughs) but see that's us entertaining you right that's why I have a whiteboard but anyway (laughs) I think we like keeping you on your toes though don't we right thank you because otherwise I'd be bored as well Um, all right, Tani, do you want to put your mobile number out or do you want us to pop it on here? How about... In- we'll do both. We'll do both. Actually, um, it might go on YouTube, so I'll just... We'll pop it in the comments. That's what we're doing. I've just made the decision then. Yeah. Okay. So we can no share I'm glad you're onto it. <laughs> yeah. um, but we will have all your um, details in the comments. Um, so, ladies, if that's pretty cool, you get to come and try a session out um, for free. And I highly recommend, doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, come and have that free session. Let me know and I might come with you. Um, but, yeah, if you want to do it on your own with Tani, it's totally worth it and it is a different experience than what you probably think it's going to be. It is so, so worth it. And the other thing that I have to comment, because Janine has just commented, is that there um, the big the groups aren't too big and all the women are amazing we have such a great amazing community that Tani's created for us and, and that's yeah it can be 
from beginners to whatever like there's no scale really isn't isn't that you know no scale and no age like we're all different ages and we all go along so well it's, yeah it's a lovely little community I love it I feel very cool and safe yeah awesome. awesome all right well, well thank you so much for joining us and sharing your wisdom and expertise ladies you'd be crazy to not um join in um for a free session with tani so we'll have all the um, details in the comments thank you so much for tonight um i appreciate your time thanks ladies for joining us thank you yeah until next time hey (laughs) absolutely all right see see you you. bye thank you bye bye